Good morning. Thank you for tuning back into my channel. Today we are talking about curriculums I use for my child with autism and childhood apraxia, my other son who has ADHD, ODD, and these are the curriculum and materials I use and some general life advice that you do not have to follow and that you can be like, nope, not doing that. And she's crazy. And that is fine. That is perfectly acceptable behavior. I do not mind at all. I'm not here to judge you and your choices and I would appreciate if you do your best not to judge mine. So let's get to the products of the day. So this book right here is 101 fun crossword puzzles for kids. Okay now the reason I think it's important to show this book is because there are many crossword puzzle books that I cannot do. I swear to you they stay for children and I don't know if they're British but some of them I cannot do. This me and my son did together and it was quite I loved it because so it has the answers here and then you have to fit them in, but it gets harder and harder as you go along, okay? A piece of furniture you sit in, sometimes made of wood. So it's just something we can do together. The main thing I wanna talk about here is your relationship. There is nothing more important than your relationship with your child. Also remember that it is a lifelong relationship. So for example, the first thing I do every morning is we play Paw Patrol. We play together, me and my one son, about 5.30 a.m., I think this morning is when we started, we started playing Paw Patrol. We do that for about 20, 30 minutes every day, depending on how busy I am. But it's just one thing we do every day because it creates a good relationship, a good bond. You have a better behaved child. And I do that while my other child is sleeping. Now, here's the thing is if he were to come to me in the afternoon and be like, hey, wanna play Paw Patrol again? Yeah, it's not my favorite thing to do. I'd be like, no, I don't want to. But what I would like to do is would you read with me? Could we play one of these board games together? Would you play a board game with me? Because it's a lifelong relationship. It's not just a whatever you want relationship, right? We do what they want, absolutely. But sometimes what we both wanna do. So sometimes we draw together, color together. So anyway, so just keep that in mind would be my advice. My first piece of advice of many advices coming your way. Okay, so that is anyway, 101 crossword puzzles for kids. And I don't know who made it. I got a kids activity publishing. I got it off of Amazon. Let me talk to you about Ad Su Mu D. This is a monstrously fun game of creative mental math that I've just tried to film and show you. <laughs> I couldn't do the equations. See that star? That means that, that is a one. So if there's a one, that means there's an easy card. So what gets you five out of this card? So choose the one. What gets you five out of that card? What gets you nine out of this card? Is there an addition or a multiplication or a subtraction or a division that you can do to get there? Now, when you go to these cards, these are pretty hard. I, sometimes you gotta use like three digits to get it. I couldn't do this card. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that is add some moo D and uh, I, yeah, I like it. So next up, oh, I have this cool thing to show you. This I think is the last product of the day today to show you, but I have products while I'm filming, but this is, let me show you this. So first, let me show you who it's by. It's the World Remarkable Map. I feel like I got it on at the that Christian uh, Conversations, Classical Conversations website. I feel like that's where I got it from, but I may not have. Anyway, so it's got colors on because we use it all the time. It's just dry erase markers or wet erase markers that we have on here. But so on this side is a map and um, it is laminated. And then on this side is the states map. So we got a world map and a states map and we just play a lot of games and make up a lot of games and do a lot of fun stuff on here. So that is again, a markable map. So take a look at that, it's ginormous. We just keep it on the table. Oh, use a wet erase marker. I never read that before. <laughs> it probably doesn't surprise you that I missed the fine print on anything. Okay, so essentially, if you have special needs children, let's call them that, then focus on writing, math, and reading. Those are your three big things. At least this is how I do it. These are the three big things. And remember, you're not keeping up with anyone. It's not like you have to keep up with the Joneses here. And unless you're planning to put your kid back into public school, you don't need to. And if they're not getting something when they're younger, they might get it in six months down the road. They might get it in a year down the road. You do not have to keep up with anyone. You just go at your own pace and watch the progress they make. Now, that being said, again, focus on reading. I focus on reading, writing, and math. Now, the writing is split in two parts. 
So that is handwriting. And if they are capable, creative writing. What that may mean is you open up a book of plain white paper and they dictate a story to you. That also helps with communication. It helps with, you know, writing and speaking. You can even tell a story to them and say, hey, so now it might be a little overwhelming if you're like, hey, tell me that's, hey, what happened in that story? But if you're like, hey, why was the pig sad in that story? But try not to ask yes or no questions, but you get what I'm saying. It depends on their level. You can start with yes or no questions, but then maybe write it down in a story. That's what brave writers suggest. Basically, you wanna stimulate the creative interest of writing without the difficulty of getting handwriting. Like we're working on creativity here. So that's an element of creativity and then just sit in front of Canva, sit in front of the computer and have them dictate stories to you if they're able about anything they want, about things they love. And sometimes it's easier to start with things that they have seen on TV. So, and then the handwriting. Now for the handwriting, I of course use, now this is the thing. This is the thing why a lot of language arts programs don't work for neurodiverse kids because handwriting is not easy. Handwriting is somewhat difficult for them, generally speaking, as a whole. And there's not much you can say about the whole but that handwriting is not that easy, which means you need a language arts program that separates grammar, separates reading, separates writing, separates whatever you wanna teach. And not to worry too much about grammar because through copy work, through things like that, they will learn it as essentially they should learn it as they're going along in life. Now let's talk about specific handwriting. So this is what I use for letters and numbers. Do one section a day, or if they're older, they could do a whole page a day. These are Bs. Notice I do not search for perfection here because again, we can do it again when they get older. But what you need is essentially a handwriting program or that's one of the reasons I don't like math with confidence is only because the handwriting is such a big portion component of it for kindergarten that I don't care for it. I've always done math with them. I just haven't done it. I, I've done it a different way and I'll show you how I do it. So that is handwriting with kids that I use. Now, essentially I focus on reading, writing, math, but then passions. Each child gets two passions in my head. I do not say that out loud. I'm not like, oh, sorry, you're limited to two passions. No, two passions that I can focus on. So for example, my one son, um, the youngest is six-year-olds, geology and robots. The other one is architecture. I forget what the other, oh, and write and writing. He loves to write. So those are the two things I focus on because again, it can get overwhelming. Like I only have so many hours in the day and this is the thing, is that when you have high needs children, you need to spend more time alone. You do, it's just a fact. And that's what the iPads are for because you need to spend more time alone, getting it together, working on a project that soothes your soul so that you can be better present, better cable and not snap at anyone and not lose your on them because you don't wanna do that. You don't wanna be that type of parent. No one wants to be that type of parent. Okay, so let's talk about how do we get them to do schoolwork when they don't want to. Quick diversion is and I'll, some people don't agree with this, which they think it's like a punishment. It's not a punishment. It's just that first we do this, then we do that. First we do this, then we do that. First we eat dinner, then we get dessert. First we clean up our room, then we get to play with, then we get to play with mom. It's just first then, that's how. So my ODD son especially is not into school and that is fine. In the afternoon you can use the iPad, but everything has to be done for the iPad. So you can just wait. I just wait, I'm not gonna argue with him. Absolutely. And then as soon as, hey, is it one o'clock I want to play on the iPad? Absolutely. Is math done? Let's do math. First we do math, then the iPad. First, and there's going to be a lot of screaming and grumbling. Yeah, well, hey, sit down, do a few questions. That's just the way it goes. Now, and I accept the right to express their feelings. You can. Um, if they're ever being aggressive with me, I leave the room. Sorry, I'm not into aggressive behavior. I don't let people hurt me. That's what I say. I do not let people hurt me. And it stemmed it pretty much, so it doesn't really happen anymore. Um, but for a while there, that's what I said. No, oh, if someone hurts you, you leave the room. And I love you, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stay and play this game. Same with if I see them self-harming. Once in a while, I see my son self-harming. And I've tried everything from coaching, counseling. I mean, anything you name it, I have tried. And finally, I just said, you know what? I'm not gonna participate in this. So if I see you doing that, it hurts me too much to watch, so I'm just gonna leave. And it stopped it, because if there's no one around there to pay attention to it, then what's the point? What's the point? Okay, so let's talk math. So because handwriting was not available, this is the math I chose, this is the math I like, this is the math I love. It starts in grade one. I just started earlier for the, um, for the ADHD child, just because he's advanced in math. But now, so you could tell, I know what these mean. So you may not know what these mean, but I know what these mean. But even before we got to those, if you look at some, so sometimes we do it orally. 
So there's some marks and sometimes I write the answers in. Okay, so we do it together. So that's just how we do it. Sometimes we do it, we skipped all this just because he knew a lot of it, but sometimes I pick some and I do them and he tells me the answers and I write them in or sometimes he does it. And some, now before, he, my other son who had autism, before he could handwrite, he would do dots as the answer. You give him a marker and he could do dots. So maybe not this necessarily like two plus three, but so he could do dots um, as the answers. So even it starts off pretty, so this is grade one though that it starts. So this is just the warm up. So to see if your child's there yet, this is the warm up so they can practice handwriting if they need to. But I skipped that section because as you see how well it went, I was like, eh, we're just not doing that. We'll just do, can he orally do it? Can he orally do that? Can you, and while they're eating, if you have a child who can't sit still, that's when I do reading. That's when I do some subjects together. Again, right now I'm doing My America, My World. I read it during breakfast or lunch. My America's Freedoms. The freedom of worship, the freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of assembly. So very basic. Again, the only thing I don't like about this, this is a Becca, it's 20 bucks. You don't need the manual. The only thing I don't like about it, and this covers also history and geography, FYI, is that it mentions school. So that I don't like a lot because a Becca is for like Christian schools. And the, every morning at school, I stand with my class to pledge allegiance to the flag. So that I don't like it. And every book at least mentions it one time about school. But it's still a very good book, very simple. Like just read a little bit at breakfast and lunch. That's where I teach a lot of subjects is, hey, we're sitting down. So this is what I'm teaching. Let us talk about children's passions. Okay, so one of the ways they can engage in passions is, so for example, my one son who wants to be an architect and is interested in drawing, we draw hotels together. Um, we sketch out hotels, we name them, we do different floors, we do cat hotels today, we did a space hotel. I think a couple days ago we did a cat hotel, all themed hotels because we just have a great time doing it. So we pursue passions in the area of interest together or them alone and yeah, that's, what we do is part of, even though they don't know it, it's part of getting them a passion and a hobby, something they're good at, really fine tuning their craft, if you will. So my son is interested in robotics. That is not as easy, I have found. And so what we do is we read a lot about robotics. So there are some robotics books that I have showed you, some robotics it's curriculum, but they're not really curriculum. They're just activity books and different coding robots we have bought. But essentially all you need to do is do reading in that. And then when they get older and they can read themselves and they can go off in that passion when they are writing themselves, they can write essays about what they have learned in that. That is my plan. We're not there yet, but we're slowly making progress. And I'm thrilled to say that my son with autism, he can read. And I'll show you the program that we do it. And I'm working on it right now with my other child. Now I bought every language arts curriculum there is. Every single one. I don't think I missed one. I have purchased. And I disliked most of them. Um, and some I loved, but it just wasn't open to what to what we're doing. It wasn't, first of all, the fact that it's all joined together, it's just not happening. I thought it would happen for the second child. It's just not happening. This is an easier way to do it at this particular time. So when they're older, I might do it. But I know through reading and writing, people say that that's how their kids learn grammar. And I will show you a special curriculum tomorrow that, um, or when I get around to it, because I'm still reading through it, but it's for gifted children, but neurodiverse children would do very well at it as well. And I know because I've used the first year with my children on it. Now back to what we're doing. So your children need to learn letter sounds. Your letters have a first name, they have a sound, followed by a last name, and or one of it's the name and one of it's the sound. A, like apple, ah, ah, ah. This is A, he's like ah, ah, ah. So if I could go back in time, we're not supposed to teach the alphabet by naming, we're supposed to teach it by like sounds, but huh, no one gave me that memo. Okay, so to teach letter sounds, there's a couple ways you can do it simply. If you wanna use elemental phonics, you can also use, of course, you can use um, All About Reading. That's a good program. I used it with uh, with this child, um, with my, autis my autistic child as well. It worked fine. I just, this program that I have switched to, it, it just, it blew it out of the water, if you ask me, just because speed, accuracy, the way my son's brain works. Okay, but back to sounds. You can also use the, the pre-kindergarten curriculum from The Good and the Beautiful. 
or Elemental Phonics. Elemental Phonics doesn't have any religion in it, The Good and the Beautiful does. They're both $20, about the same price. And either way, it deals with the beginning sounds. Following that, we need mnemonic devices, especially if your kids don't recognize sounds, you can use mnemonic devices for sounds as well. But so we got a little bit of sounds going, not a ton, but to make progress, we started with the Dolch Pre-Primer Sight Words flashcards. Now I've showed you this a million times. Some people don't agree with this, this system. Yeah, well, my kid reads, so <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. So this is A, this is and, and then when you flip it over, it's got it on the other side. And, and, and away, away, big. So you go through it with the mnemonic picture, right? And then after you can go through it without that. And then they know some words and it happens very fast. Surprise, it shocked me how fast it was. And these are the books I use with my son. This is the Craft Right Brain Readers. The boring little books that always work and I have to say it worked like you wouldn't believe. So at first we started using these, Craft Right Brain Sight Readers. So I wanna say they're like 10 bucks for each one of these and then 20 bucks for the book, but I'm not really sure. It's been a while. So is, do you see how it's a snake? Is, and then you read the sentence. Is, is that a snake or is it a worm? Ah, oh, excuse me, a burp is embarrassing. Okay, so again, using mnemonic devices, and then they go in to the readers. Now, so is, at, and mine are these in here. Level 1A, this is the book, level 1A. Those are the first three words in there. Is, at, my. And then fat, pat, rat, sat. So you go over those words. And then pat is a rat. Pat is my rat. Pat's up. Anyway, you don't need me to read it through you, but it also has these transparencies because sometimes they're easier. So see, they're simple little stories and they get more and more um, interesting. It's about a cat because then moves on from the cat to this to this cat named Max, moves on from the rat. So it, I mean, we're just making our way through the book and to see him read is just, it's brilliant to see because then it transfers to other things as well. Now, also remember, teach in a way that they that will help them remember songs. You can find songs on addition, on subtraction, on a ton of stuff on the internet. Number songs are all around. Number blocks is amazing. It taught one of my kids a ton of math stuff before he even began, like when he was just really, really little. And is there anything else that I need to tell you? No, I guess that's about it, but I'll show you that curriculum. I'm telling you, I'm almost done going through the next year because uh, I already did a video on the first year, so I'll try and find it. I'll connect it at the end of this video and you could take a look and see if you like it. And uh, that is it for now. Take care. Please like and subscribe. Yes. And, and hit the bell for notifications.